What's up, everyone? I'm Scott. And I'm Jason. And you are listening to Liquid Carnage, my friend. Episode of 2022 um, yeah. is being recorded as we speak. Yes. Big things are yes. happening here in the Liquid Carnage world. Yes. Um, the first annual, first ever Liquid Carnage Fantasy Football uh, Championship game this week. Yes. And, you and I, I, versus me. And this is when the gods have lined up perfectly because you were the number one seed this year. I was the number two seed this year. We should be <clears throat> in the playoffs. We should be in the championship game, one versus two. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it should always be. Um, yeah, it, and as as we know, it doesn't always work out that way. It does not. But you you did get some help this weekend in our league, not your other one, but you squeaked out a one-point victory. And I had to sweat out uh, a, a Justin Herbert performance that was so subpar. I went from sweating bullets to – um, an ass whipping pretty quick where I just whipped his ass by 35 points. So, well, and this is the, so the funny story about this is, so I won the, the game by one point um, earlier in the season. He was the number two seed. I was the number three seed. We played each other and I was down the entire game. It was the Josh Jacobs, 85 yard overtime. Oh, touchdown yeah. run, And so I beat him by one point that game too. Oh, <laughs> I beat him twice by one point. Oh god! Sometimes it's better. Hey, when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons football, that's what it is. True. So if you're playing in a championship game this weekend, congratulations for the grind. Um, if who do you, whoever you think, we'll post. I'll post a picture of our starting lineups this week, and you guys can decide who's got the better matchups and the uh, and and who's going to take Carnage Championship game, but. Uh, I got, I'm going to be honest, man. I got some tough draws, so it's probably going to be you. I don't know. I, I, I have a bunch of my better players are, are hurt or coming off injuries. or the, Like now they're saying that some of the Raiders players aren't even going to play because they have nothing to play for. Uh, so I don't know. It, yeah. it, it's going to be crazy. So we'll see how it goes. I, either way, uh, if I'm going to lose, I'd rather lose to you than anybody else, buddy. I appreciate that. Same to you, man. Uh, Thanks, man. I, I- this league and he's in the bottom well he's just not good so no he's not a very good team i mean he, he, he calls this he called this, this is a dynasty league we have a real topic today but this, this is what we're going to talk about right now we, we have a dynasty league where we keep five players every year perpetually um i have managed to build a continually winning team through smart pickups and drafting and i, I last year you and i made a trade for uh kyler murray alvin kamara straight up um that worked. Mars worked out pretty well for you this year. Uh, um, he's been consistently the ten to twenty points every game. Yeah, which is better than Kyler Murray's been doing for me this year. Now that he's hurt, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm very happy that I switched to Joe Burrow earlier, and I believe I will be probably moving forward with him because yes. I'm not dumb. No, no, I, I, I think that uh, you know the Tom has you know he's always kept the kicker. As mm-hmm. one of the dynasty players, and I think that's just paid. It's hurt him. It it really has hurt him. You get what you pay um, for, and, it, but you know you get exactly, exactly. So, so you know, I, I figure you know, I'm going for my sixth championship in seven years. Um, that's what you would call a Patriots dynasty. Uh, so, but that's if I get past you, the Sandman, this weekend. The sand, enter the Sandman. That's right. Enter the Sandman. Right. If only that's fans right. can get past into the Sandman, we take it. Otherwise. Uh, you will get your first uh, championship in this in this league, and maybe we put a wager on it. We won't. Know, we will see each other this weekend for New Year's. Yeah, we, um, maybe we, we won't know the maybe outcome because my my major players do not play until Monday night uh, when Cincinnati plays Buffalo. Oh, okay. And then um, I was just trying to think too because uh, um, the. Yeah, we won't know until the recording. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Yeah. Like a nice cigar or something. We will. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it off the air. We'll figure it out. But anyway, on with the show today. It's it's the last show of moving into twenty twenty three. Uh, big things are happening around the world. Uh, personally, <coughs> professionally, uh, I think for both of us, we're we're in good spots. We're yeah. on the precipice of was it season seven around the corner yeah. for Liquid Carnage? Starting starting of season season seven. Um, I think we're only. I think we're getting close to our 300th episode too. Damn. 
Yeah, I think it's gonna. I think the three hundred episodes comes in like February or or uh, maybe it's March, but it's coming up. Man, that's good. Yeah, see, sometimes that's just based yeah. off. That's right. You know. Yeah, that that's true. And you know what? And this is the best part is there's no lie about that. Yeah, uh, that is. Uh, we have done two hundred and ninety. I think it's. I think this is this recording is our two hundred ninetieth episode. So. Um, no one can de- no one can fact check us. No one can go behind the scenes and figure out whether I'm lying or not. Um, we have 288 plus episodes in the banks, uh, ready to pull at a moment's notice. And that's what that's what makes it fun, man. Because we can we can drop some of our favorite classic episodes, even as a rehash for our new our new listeners that maybe don't want to go that far back in the catalog. Uh, because who doesn't want to hear about and the lizard people, yeah. Who doesn't want to know about relationship deal breakers? Yep. Um, or still, who doesn't want to hear top five? Or who doesn't want to hear our, our peer reviews from 2019 with their EP? I know, I know. And if if you really need to um, go to uh, Liquid underscore EP on Twitter, and you might even be able to see 288 reviews of our shows. He's done. Like he's he, had a I, review on every single show. I don't think he posts those anymore. Oh, he, he doesn't. Got, he, oh. he got mad at Twitter and took it off his phone, and I'm not sure he's been. So we're even we're even further along committed to the show now than we were uh, before he because he was putting he was doing some pretty uh, studious notes on Twitter every week. Yeah, and, he at least uh, the and so, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, well, good for him. But at any rate, though, yeah. what what that does though is when you get this far into a, I guess into a side hustle, we don't do this for the money. We've we've talked to people about this. I want to know why we're not trying to monetize. I think you and I have a different outlook on this. Um, we've had opportunities over the years to turn this into an actual radio show, but uh, yeah, geographic have. logistics made that an issue. Um, the f- better paying opportunities that we were currently in were also a deciding factor. Um, I, I think the chance to grow in something or do something new uh, – when someone gets to pro- get, gets approached those opportunities, you have to take those into consideration and 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 really decide if you want to, you have to do to make sure you're the best person for that job. Do you not agree? I, I do, I do, and and I, I mean, they, 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 I have to be honest. The, the the number one pod show or you know podcast that's out there is Crime Junkies. It's number mm-hmm. one. It's been recorded as number one. She, they went from two girl, two friends just like us, uh, five or six years ago to now. It is uh, a company of like forty employees, and um, th- and just to get an idea of how much they've monetized this, um, they have a distinction of donating like five million dollars to local charities. Mm-hmm. Wow, the podcast has donated over the course of the career of the podcast $5 million to local charities. That's impressive on a different level. So extrapolate that out. That means that they took a podcast simply just like us and monetized that to the point if you gave 5% of all your earnings, that would be $100 million. (laughs) So we don't do it for the money. No. Um, We do not do it for the money. No, because Lord knows it more committed than we are with a lot more serious in depth topics. That's for damn sure. But um, there's an authenticity about what we do, uh, and I mean, if you've ever heard the podcast, I don't know if you ever listened to her podcast, but um, yeah. her her production level is intense. It's amazing, and frankly, there no one will ever doubt that she is not fully committed to giving a a a, a product to the people that is as authentic as possible. And I think that that's one thing that you and I, um, I think we're authentic. I mean, we don't say things that are lies to try to gain no, fans. No. I mean, you, what you see is what you get. And I'm okay with that. Even if it doesn't mean we've monetized it to $100 million, I'm okay that every podcast that people hear from us is two friends sitting at a bar or two friends talking about whatever's going on in life. And and it makes me feel good. That leads me to another question. Uh, since we're on the subject of podcast, are there is there a podcast out there that you, that you listen to regularly, or a, a genre, or just that that you have to listen to, or that just keeps your day going? It's kind of like almost a ritual. No, 
I, I, this is the only podcast that I, I listen to. Really? That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I oh. used to listen to Crime Junkies. Um, the, uh, uh, in fact, I was the one that heard about it first from a friend of mine. And then, um, uh, and then I told Noreen about it, and she listens faithfully. Uh, mm -hmm. And she's turned that love into podcasts of, of uh, other crimes, you know, like, because this, this company, this Crime Junkies podcast, um, uh, they now branched out to, they or produce other crime podcasts from other people. So they've hired people to kind of do this. So, <clears throat> so um, that's kind of where it started. Uh, but I, I don't listen to it anymore. I'm more of an audio book person. So I, I listen to audio books over that. I bounce back and forth between the two. I, I keep podcasts on a lot in the background of my office. Okay. And I don't listen to crime podcasts. I, I just, I, I, I started off with those. That's where I guess that's where I got like the, what happens with this and, you know, final next episode. And that was interesting. Um, but I, 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 as anyone that listens to the show knows that I'm a big fan of the paranormal. I find myself going down a lot of rabbit holes and conspiracy theory podcast rabbit holes, and they are amazing um, because some of these people really are wearing tinfoil hats. And some of these people are just, you know, they're just talking about the stuff you can find on the general internet. But it's, to me, it's very interesting and, and entertaining with the rest of the world it is the way it is. Um, this kind of lets your mind wander into an area of potential disbelief. Uh, with with potential proof to me is a lot of fun okay and then you, okay. And then you have then you have your sports podcast because i do enjoy uh occasionally listen to undisputed and the colin coward show um as much as i i often disagree with some of their viewpoints um i do appreciate the fact that they are podcasts and i can digest them in a half hour versus watching the whole three hour show oh got it okay yeah and that makes sense i mean yeah i mean podcasts are an amazing medium and i you know, I think the, the only thing that I maybe and maybe it's just, you know, you know how I am. Um, I really I really am always skeptical about people that talk of something that they're passionate about as if they're the expert and no one else knows what they're talking about. Um, and I yeah. feel like some of those podcasts, <clears throat> when they have an uh, ulterior agenda going on, um, yeah. you know, I, I don't know who made them an expert that I should trust their judgment, but I'm immediately on uh, guard for people, uh, you know, that, that push an agenda or an opinion, um, that frankly, they tell it like it's the truth and it's an opinion. And, um, and so I get, I get a little weary of that kind of stuff, but, um, Hey, as long as, as long as you're doing it from a place of entertainment and, and trying to, you know, have your audience enjoy something, I, I'm fine with it. I really am fine with it. Yeah, I think so too. And a great new medium that that we've developed over the last what 10 15 years probably that's come a, a very long way and it makes me wonder like what who got this who got the idea to start a podcast i mean who well, who, who sat down and said I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a way to release it digitally almost like a news article versus an audio book i equate the 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 I, I don't know the answer to that i equate the development of podcasts though just like you said I don't want to watch three hours of Skip and uh, Shannon Shit. Sharp going at each other. Skip Bayless and, and, and Shannon Sharp uh, going at each other. Um, but I have no problem condensing that down to 30 minutes of the highlights. Because that's really yeah. all I need is highlights, you know. And I feel like the same way, like, you know how, um, you know, binge watching. You, before you would go to a network station, they would release – you know, the first six episodes with commercials, and then you have to wait each week. Someone came up with the idea, why don't I just print, produce all the episodes at one time, release all the episodes, and then people will binge watch it and just get over, you know, done and over the, the, the series. I feel like podcasts are the same way. Someone said, you know, talk radio or, you know, these shows, they got commercials and you got to plug things. And why don't we just do something that's just focused a, a half an hour boom yeah. get it done get it over with the problem with with what they're doing now is that you're right they used to just release everything at one file so we can binge it all you want yeah uh, works in the streaming platforms got wise to that and now that a lot of them do like you get your first two episodes right away and then it's every wednesday for the next eight to ten weeks we'll get you your next oh episode. and i yeah that is true so yeah we ran into that 
nearly as much. So yeah. either you have to wait and then you can binge it all, which is fine in a lot of cases, but you know, sometimes it's not great. You know, I, I have that big problem with, uh, with, with, with some streaming shows, not so much because one the, the ones I listen to, I, I have no problem uh, going back in their older catalogs, listening to stuff because nothing I listen to is episodic. Okay, okay. Every, everything I do is is topic based, so it's every show's a new topic, so it's not. Okay. Yeah. You know. But uh, you know, I mean, so yeah, I so I don't listen. What about Tom? Does he listen to podcasts? Yeah, he listens to Crime Junkies. He listens to uh, Sports Crime Junkies. Um, he'll send me he'll send me stuff every so often uh, for things to listen to. But he he and I have very different tastes in what our interests are, especially when it comes to to digital. You know. Yeah, I was. Um, I mean, it, it is kind of fascinating that there are podcasts about all sorts of things, uh, yeah. and the production level. I think that's one thing that I find amazing. I mean, remember when we first started with recording the podcast? We had the microphones and we had the splitter and we had to plug it into the computer and we had oh, yeah. special software and, and we had all these things going. And now they've made it to the point like us. We're recording on a cell phone app that basically, yeah, 200 miles, yeah, 200 miles apart. Uh, you know, and it, it's just fascinating that people can still do that. Yeah, and I have only going to get better and better as as internet services get better with technology, and and the technology itself gets better. Uh, these things will be second nature. So who knows what's going to happen? And maybe there's a a platform out there waiting to be developed that become friends on podcasts, and they create their own podcasts uh, on this platform, and anyone can listen to it or join in them whenever, wherever. And it's a great social media, the next great social media platform that will take down the world. What uh, what what do you look for? I mean, like what what constitutes a good podcast for you? Like when you're when you're searching, or what what when if you take the ones that you're currently listening, to, let's do it this way. If you take the ones you currently listen to, what makes them good podcasts? You say, you know, I really enjoy this, so I'm going to keep listening. For me, it's it's real life the stories that that have happened to people, eyewitness accounts. Um, and it's got to be a topic either I know enough about to be dangerous and I want to learn more about. Okay. Or just something that I've never even heard of before I think would be interesting because a lot of what I listen to, you know, you can Google Sasquatch. We'll just use that as an example and find 10,000 different Sasquatch stories on the first, you know, 10 pages of Google. Yeah. Okay. And so a lot of do the same, those stories over and over and over. So you heard what you heard them all. You might get a slightly different <coughs> perspective. Um, but when you when you find some for me when I find people that go in a complete different theory, I, I like to listen to those because I think you get a different perspective, which doesn't mean because no one's going to tell them they're wrong because nobody really knows if they're wrong or if they're right. So it's just a different idea almost. No one can, no one can tell them otherwise that they're not wrong because you know. Okay, so because um, I, I will say that because the one podcast genre that I do listen to is crime, uh, mm -hmm. true crime, and I will say that the presentation or sometimes the production level means something to me when I'm listening to one crime over another over another, like when I'm differentiating them. Uh -huh. um, and I, I find that uh, you know there are certain people that are just fantastic storytellers. You know, yeah. they're, they're just really good at telling whatever they're talking about. They're very good at. Um, presenting yeah versus other people who might be telling the same crime but just the presentation uh, just doesn't sound good you know or it just doesn't it doesn't you know bring me in and grab hold me in you know big that's a big positive for podcasts if you have if you have a good story with your facts laid out and your presentation is solid you're going to hold on to an audience a lot better than if you have great facts but a crappy presentation yeah Mm -hmm. if you can't speak clearly if you can't maintain your train of thought if you try to do it all off the cuff without with not without editing it it's it's not as easy as it looks and it, and it makes the, and it makes it look worse that's a bad product you have a very small window in a field like this to where let's be real we, we joke about our four to five listeners but th these are most likely people we know if these yeah. guys didn't know us they would they could care less what we're doing, but we get downloads from all over the world, which makes me wonder the hell uh, are these people finding it? us not that we appreciate it. Don't get me wrong, but 
are they sticking with us? If they're not, why are they not? And that's the downside of this media too, is we don't have the opportunity to reach out and say, Hey, why what, did you download us by mistake or just not give you a topic that you thought was great? Well, and, and, you know, word of mouth is probably a big selling point. I mean, I heard about this crime junkies through a friend, a fr- and then I told Noreen about it and I'm sure she's told people about it and they, you know, um, but <clears throat> if you ever like when you listen to her presentation of the stories, obviously the presentation is good, but the amount of uh, knowledge and research and what she has pulled together to put the story together. I'm sure you have it too. Like some of these people who, you know, let's say Sasquatch, but they're such an expert or they have such an, a take on it that you trust that they know what they're talking about, that it's not just, yeah, I've heard of a Sasquatch. Yeah. And that's it. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they sound like they're an expert. They sound like that. That's what they're, you know, that's their, um, uh, their gift to the world is to give an educated, well thought out opinion or knowledge about this and let you decide whether you believe it or not. Yeah. And that's, and I, th- I think that's what I appreciate about like the, the sci-fi paranormal listen to, because a lot of it is historical. Things they've been able to figure out about, in some cases, Benjamin Franklin uh, and, and his ongoing activities in secret societies back in the 1700s um, and how that stuff has all led up to where we're at in the world. See, a lot of it goes down different rabbit holes. And I think when, you, when you're open down those rabbit holes, it expands your mind and your perspective to realize that this world is probably a little bit bigger and a little bit more different than we realize or want to admit to ourselves, you know? So... I'm going to put a statement out there. You tell me whether it's a good thing or whether it's a bad thing. Okay. Anyone in this world can start a podcast. Yes. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Yes. That's okay. So it's both. Yeah. Um, I, like I, I, think... wish, I wish that we could get rid of, because sometimes I get overwhelmed when you go on to Podbean or you go on to Apple or you go anywhere and you just type in a simple search, the number of podcasts about a certain topic is overwhelming to me. Yeah. Uh, that, that it's like, can't we just get to the point where, you know, if we have the top five and the rest of us just kind of go now, don't get me wrong. That means that we would stop. We would have stopped after episode seven. I get it. Yeah. I, I totally understand. <laughs> but at least we got seven in. We got seven in, uh, not almost 300. Uh, so I get it, but um, you, so you, you're kind of mixed on whether that's a good thing or a bad thing that anybody and everybody can start a podcast. Yeah, you know, and and I think a lot of that, from my perspective, comes down to sometimes you don't know how good somebody can be unless you give them the tools and opportunity to go out there and be great. So they might not be great to start off with, but if you give them the opportunities and they have the ability to plan a great presentation and get it with facts and, and everything, and then give that presentation on a podcast and release it to the world. And then, um, if it's an evolution, man, the first one might be terrible, but it's like anything else. You keep working at it. You keep honing your craft. It could be, it could be fantastic within a few years. I, I think everybody should be, should be afforded that opportunity. Okay. So, and, and um, I, I had, I had one experience that just came to mind. Um, I used to listen to an investor's podcast and the two original guys that, um, that started the podcast, very knowledgeable, very easy. They, they had a good kind of a dynamic, like you and me, a good friendship where they would, you know, talk about a topic. Each of them would kind of inject something of their personal life into the investment topic. Um, and for three years, I listened to them regularly. Uh-huh. They got bigger. They monetized it. You know, they started doing the things like every good podcaster does by making it bigger. And one of the things that I've learned is these people, Mm -hmm. they then start to hire someone out to replace them so they can do other things. And, and uh, this podcast did that. The two original uh, podcasters left and uh, Mm -hmm. a a new guy came on uh, and, and Mm -hmm. I stopped listening after he, this new guy took over just because the, it was just not the same for me. Well, I think that's the beauty of, of liquid carnage. It's that, 
you have to find another Kern and have to find someone else with an edge in their name to even make this work. If we're going to be, yeah, we, we definitely have made it so that no one can just replace us. I, I have, I will openly admit we have, have, we have a few past guests that have said, Hey man, if you ever can't record and need a special guest host, I'm happy to step in. And, and I've had to look at them and say, you're not liquid, whatever edge. I am the. Edge. So it's true. You know, I'm sorry, pal. You know, you can't you can't replace him. You can't replace me. Not even for an episode. If, if one of us, sorry, we're back. That we're back when we're both healthy. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely makes you think that there's so many little things that you could have at Liquid Carnage. You could have, you know, the same kind of ideas and topics, the same interaction. Uh, but if one of us or both of us were not here. It wouldn't yeah. be the same. It just would oh, not yeah. be uh, the same. We bring something different. I'm sure that's what all these podcasts, you know, the person who started it or the person who created it brings something unique to the table that makes it, you know, worthwhile to say why people listen or why people, you know, follow it. And I think that's half the fun of podcasts. Because <clears throat> so much of this is personality driven. If you don't click with the personality, you can just click stop and go on to the next one. Well, and, and I mean, I think that the enduring thing about our podcast is uh, is very difficult to replicate or to create a connection of friendship that we have that's mm-hmm. just natural between us because we've been friends for so long. You know, if someone said, hey, um, there's two, this podcast is about two friends that go to a bar and just talk. If they don't have that camaraderie or if they don't have that history. Yeah, it's bad. It's gonna sound. It's gonna sound disingenuous. It's not gonna sound authentic. Yeah, and, and I think the authenticity is key. You know, and, that, and that's and that, this episode's a perfect example of that because as we wrap up today's show, we are, we fully anticipated talking about uh, embellishing. Something totally resume. different. We were gonna <laughs> embellish on your resume. We are gonna talk about things we did, things we've seen. Uh, but now here we are at the end of the show. Um, we have not touched that topic at all. So that goes back into the bank for potentially next week. Or whatever, <laughs> or another time, yeah, another year. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, that's so funny. See, that's that's what friendship can do. Naturally, just just changes. It morphs into something else, and it wasn't we, uh, truly. If you listen to our pre-production notes, this was not the topic. No, no, this it, was it, not even discussed as a topic. This wasn't anything. So it, it makes it that much more special. And Tom will laugh at us and say that we don't have pre-production notes or pre on the call with us so he doesn't know so. well and the good thing is is that tom has gotten to the point now because he listened to 290 episodes of us he knows when the topic is mine and when the topic is yours that's very true that is very <laughs> he true. knows because every time he goes oh well we know who started this conversation okay <laughs> <laughs> and if we ever get t-shirts made it'll be very clear who's who in the t-shirts without actually putting our names on it so oh i think gosh. that's kind of a fun thing but as we wrap up today's show uh, is there a podcast do you listen to that you think we should check out? Uh, we want to hear about it from you. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. Uh, if you have some new fun podcasts for our EP Tom up in the Denver metro area, hit him up on Instagram and Twitter at Liquid underscore EP. I, uh, this is our last episode uh, uh, recorded of the year. So this will be the last one recorded in 2022. And, you know, we, we've done podcasts for on the, on this episode where we talked about new year's resolutions. I don't really have any, so I'm not going to discuss that, but I was listening to a news uh, story um, and they were talking about top uh, new year's resolutions for 2023. And uh, what I was fascinated was, is this year, a lot of the, of the um, new year's resolutions were be nicer to people. Um, you know, help, help, help a neighbor once a month. You know, it was like, it was very not focused on me, focused on other people. And I thought that was kind of an interesting take of how we've kind of evolved that, you know, a news resolution doesn't have to be, you know, lose weight, get in better shape, make more money, you know, all that other stuff that kind of comes. I I think that, I think that's a lot coming out of a pandemic where we couldn't do that just out of, you know, certain, where we were told not to for so long, you realize that we do need people. We do need each other. We do need to be kind to everyone, or we should be kind to everyone, I should say. And it doesn't hurt us to go and help somebody that might need a few minutes of our time. Our time is not that to help someone uh, have a better day while we're busy staring at our phones. I also think, too, I think that people, especially over the last you know year, 
I think they're really getting tired of constantly feeling like it's us versus them. I, I really do. I feel like I feel like people are just kind of getting tired of, you know, if you're not with us, you're against this attitude. Constant. And so people are saying, you know what, I'm going to make a concerted effort to break through that because I'm done with that. So uh, it just made me feel good that uh, not everything is about me, 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 uh, you know, that uh, that people are starting to say, you know what? I have enough. I, my life is good enough. I want to do something to help other people or make make other people better, and I'll get the the um, inadvertent joy of that, and it'll make me feel good. So, anyways. So, as we wrap up today's show, uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy Holidays. Uh, may 2023 be happy and prosperous for you, and we wish you nothing but the best. With that being said, Jason, take us home. Happy New Year, everyone. We, uh, we really appreciate you. Look forward to 2023, and and uh, enjoying the podcast next year. That was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage.